Hey everyone, this is Casey. Today I'm going to show you some quick tips to mix 2D with 3D. First of all, our scene is originally created by Yen. You can find it in the asset browser. And I made some changes to the composition just for the purpose of this tutorial. It comes with the materials, so we don't need to worry about texturing. We are going to first light this scene. I have a mirror light positioned in the upper right corner, forming an angle with the camera. I use it as the key light to illuminate the right side of the scene. At this point, the left side is too dark, so I'll add a dome light as a fill light to brighten it. The HDRI texture I loaded is also from the asset browser. Now the 3D part is done, let's think about making some elements 2D. For example, I want to make the front black part of the TV to be 2D. So let's find the object here. TV front. Then create a new 2 material and assign it to this object. Right now, if we check the render view, we'll see this 2D tune part is also affected by our physical lights, namely our area lights and our dome lights. This is not what I want, so I'm going to go to the details tab of these lights and find the two related options. Let's make them all zero, so these lights will no longer affect our tune shaders. Instead, I'm going to create an infinite light and use it exclusively to affect our tune shaders. This time, let's go to the details tab and set all the contributions to zero except for the three that are tune related. If we start rotating this light, we'll see changes on the tune surface. And I think I want to increase the intensity to 2. Then let's make this infinite light a child of the key light. We can either manually zero out the rotation values or use this reset transform command. This way the 2D and 3D lights will be aligned so everything feels cohesive and natural. Now that the lighting is set up, we can move on to tweaking the tune shader. For example, I might want to reduce the number of knots and adjust their colors. Here I already have the color palette, so let me quickly change the colors. I also want to bring back text details that were originally included in the PBR material. So let's copy the diffuse texture in the PBR material and paste it into the new tune shader. We can plug it directly into the exposure of the base tone map. Right now the text might be too thin and not very clear. So we can add a ramp in between to increase the contrast. Regarding why I handled the tune shader this way, I've explained it in details in the previous tutorial. If you haven't seen it yet, feel free to check out the link in the corner. I don't think I'll need reflection here. As for the contour, I prefer to keep only the internal one so that this 2D object blends well with other 3D elements. Before we move on, let's rename the material to get it organized. Then we can find more objects to turn into 2D, like maybe this selection on the console. We can simply duplicate this shader, rename it, assign it, And we'll need to swap this texture. Let's go to the console's original material to copy the correct diffuse texture. 
Also, here I want to invert this ramp so that the text appears white. Some adjustments of the knot positions might be needed. Cool. Finally, we can add some purely 2D lines to enhance the mix of different dimensions. For example, here I can use the spline sketch tool to draw freely directly in the viewport. Since I'm using a mouse, the lines are a bit rough, but we can smooth them out using the smooth tool here. Then let's sweep it to make it a geometry. For the radius, something like this can be good. The material for this one will be very simple. We don't need the texture. And in the base tone map, let me leave only one knot and give it a color. Maybe a pink like this. We can add a touch of emission too. The internal contours here look off, so I'll remove it and enable the external contours instead. What we can further do is to give the thickness some variations. We can achieve this by adjusting the scale curve under the details tab of the sweep object. Cool, we can even add more. If you are not into freehand drawing, you can just use spline presets, like this wave one. Let's quickly tweak its shape and placement. After we got the shape we want, we can again sweep it and give it a material. This looking good to me. And that's basically it for today's quick tip. Feel free to download the project files. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.